So what what are we looking at as far as recession means home price decline? What have you got for data there? Yeah, I think that's a great place to start. Most people think that home uh, recessions lead to housing prices declining, but actually the data is very much the opposite. So I went and I looked back at all of the recessions since 1978. I chose 1978 because that's when we actually have good housing data. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let's put this to the test. Let's look at all of the recessions since 1978 and let's see how housing performed. And uh, what I found is that in those recessions, we've had six recessions and I'm talking about five of them right now. There is one that I'm leaving out right now, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. But in five of those six recessions, GDP has gone down 12.2% on average. Right, the economy has been constricting. Right, it's been going down, but housing prices have actually gone up in five out of the last six recessions. Not only have they gone up, they have gone up at a rate that's even higher than the forty-year average for housing across the entire country. The average for forty-year housing across the entire country is an appreciation rate of four and a half percent. When you look at the five out of the last six recessions, housing prices across the country, excuse me, housing prices in Jacksonville have actually gone up 5.6% in five out of the last six recessions. So I left one recession out there, Pablo. Which one did I leave out, brother? Let's, let's, I mean, it looks like you left the uh, great recession out there because we all know what happened there, right? Let me, um, I think you got a good graphic illustrating this, right? Oh, cool, so, yeah. Yeah, so talk us talk us through this one real quick. This is um, we've got five recessions that happened, right? Mm -hmm. January eighty to July eighty, um, July eighty one to November eighty two, July ninety to March ninety one, March two thousand one to November two thousand one, and February twenty to April twenty. Right, that is the uh, COVID recession, right? Mm -hmm. um, showing six months, sixteen months, nine months, eight months, two months worth of recession. GDP declines between 8.5%, 8.1%, 5.5%, 2.9%. COVID pandemic GDP decline of 36.2%. And um, Jacksonville home price appreciation during this recession being 1.8, 13.9 in that, in that 81, 82. 0.4 in the savings and loans crisis, the dot-com boom, it inflated at almost 6, 5.9. And COVID pandemic 5.9, which shows an average home price appreciation of 5.6% in Jacksonville, which is higher than what we normally quote of that 4.6% appreciation in Jacksonville. Exactly. So completely um, in, in conflict with this idea that during a recession, housing pricing goes down in Jacksonville for five of six. Mm -hmm. But there is that one. Right. There mm -hmm. is 2008. Mm -hmm. um, if we are to believe that this is an extraordinary occurrence, right, that it's not going to happen because this isn't two of seven as opposed to it's six of seven. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Meaning, mm -hmm. I don't know. I have to explain that. I think they got it. I got you. Um, what do we need to look at to feel good about the idea that this isn't 2008 again and that's not the new norm? There should be a very big difference as to the reasons why the recession happened. Okay. If you believe that the Great Recession, which is the recession that we saw housing prices actually decline by a large number, if you look at the causes of that recession, you believe that is very different than the causes of every other recession since 1978, then you could lead to a conclusion that those recessions since 1978 are more normal. And then you would look to the causes of this recession and you would say, well, geez, is that like the same recession in 2008? So in 2008, real estate caused the recession. It started by people getting loans that shouldn't have been getting loans. People were unqualified and loans were given out all the time. I was just talking to a friend who was over at my house this weekend and I was, I was talking about some of the things I was going to share on the show because he's super interested and he's not a real estate guy, but I was like, do you realize like the type of loans that they had in 2008 that, that, that they advertised? Like I would get email advertise about, advertisements about these loans. They were called ninja loans. 
He's like, nah, ninja loans? I've never heard of a ninja loan. I'm like, yeah, ninja, no income, no job or assets. Like that was the type of loan that people got in a large volume in 2008. So people were getting loans that they shouldn't have had in 2008. On top of that, we created these lending products where they would have these adjustable rate mortgages that had teaser rates. So your, your rate might be, you know, I don't know, five, 6% for your mortgage. But for the first three years, we were going to tease that. We were going to have your interest rate be 1%. So you couldn't afford it anyways. And then you get on board and you have like a 1% interest rate for the first three years or five years or whatnot. And then all of a sudden, that is going to adjust up. And you couldn't afford it in the first place. Now you really can't afford it when it actually hits a 5% rate or a 6% rate. And there's a lot of other things that happened that, that led uh, to the depths of the Great Recession and the depths of the housing crisis. But in the beginning, it was people who shouldn't have been getting loans got loans. And then those loans adjusted on people. And uh, that is what caused the Great uh, recession, and that's what caused the housing crisis. Ninjas caused the Great Recession. Got to watch out for ninjas, man. <laughs> if you see ninjas, watch out for Put your money somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, watch out, man. I, I don't like ninjas, man. I mean that that um that is exactly what I remember, right? Like I remember number one, every one of my friends were mortgage brokers or lenders. Yeah, <laughs> everybody had everybody's friends where everybody became a mortgage yeah, broker. Like, well, you know, in order to have a housing crash, you have to have a you have to have a supply and demand imbalance, right? You have to have a ton of supply hitting the market. Yeah. You have to have very little demand. And that supply that's hitting the market has to be sold at a discount. For you to see large declines in housing prices, yep. crack, a crash, yep. right? Yep. Um, and all of that perfect storm came together in 2008 because, again, people were getting loans that shouldn't. What that did when those rates adjusted uh, is that people could not afford them. That led to foreclosures. Foreclosures happened en masse. People don't realize this, but in 2008, 9, 10, 30, 40 percent once you got to 2009, 2010, 30, 40 percent of all purchases of real estate were foreclosures. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, we're going to sense. look at some of the stats here. So if you're trying to think about why 2008's recession was different than the other ones, housing caused the recession in 2008. Therefore, housing declined in 2008. Those other recessions were not were not caused by real estate. Guess what? This recession that we're in or we're going to be in is not caused by real estate either. Yeah. And you shared, you put this, this chart together. That was kind of like the crux of the show yesterday of the client investor only client only call um, that showed it by the stats, right? The idea of supply and demand that we talk about all the time, months of inventory, MOI, right? Like the, not your average statistic that we all know here in our community uh, was at 16 up 15.9 in 2008. Um, when the equilibrium is like six point something, six seven, to seven months, six to seven months, in 2022, it's 1.4, right? So well below equilibrium. The percentage of these adjustable rate mortgages in 2008, 45% of all mortgages were a ticking time bomb. In 2022, it's 4%, right? So that means 55% of people, you know, were good to go <laughs> based on they didn't need a raise to be able to afford their home in 2008. Today, 96% of people don't need a raise to be able to afford their home, yeah. right? Uh, unemployment figures, 5.4% in Jacksonville today is 3.1% in Jacksonville. Uh, you know, 50% less unemployment, you know, let, sure. it's, it's, it's reduced, but I, th I think that that's a, that's an interesting sense. What, what do I need to know about that one? I don't know how to explain that. Like I'm saying that this, this recession is different than 2008, that the recession that we're going into now is different than 2008. Yeah. 